Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about faster than light motion. Because there are some things in the universe that are moving faster than light. But how is that even possible? Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So I'm sure by now most of you have heard that nothing in the universe can move faster than light. The so-called speed of light is really the limit of the speed in the universe and pretty much all of the motion in the universe and all of the modern physics depends on the idea of the constant value of the speed of light. And you can kind of see how fast this speed is by looking at this simulation created by James O'Donoghue that helps us visualize how fast the light travels between the Earth and the Moon. But yet, in science there is a concept of superluminal motion, the motion that's faster than the speed of light. And it just so happens that there are at least three different ways for us to actually describe superluminal motion when it comes to actual physics. In other words, if you were to look around the universe, you might actually find at least three examples where things seem to be, or are, moving faster than the speed of light. So let's discuss these three things. The first one is kind of more obvious. It directly relates to the idea of the expansion of the universe and how the universe can actually expand faster than the speed of light, which is why we have something known as the visible horizon. And the so-called visible universe refers to the fact that Essentially, if you were to look away from us in every single direction, there is a physical limit to how far we can actually see. Since the universe is expanding, and since the light has very limited speed, at some point really really far away from us, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, so we will actually never be able to see this part of the universe. And since the universe is expanding once again, at some point even the farther reaches of space will become invisible to us. In about a trillion years, we'll actually not even see a single galaxy anymore, we'll be the only visible galaxy in the universe. And so in that sense, space itself is allowed to travel faster than the speed of light. It doesn't violate any uh, physical laws and it's allowed to do a lot more than that. And so that's example number one, the space is allowed to have superluminal speeds. Example number two is a little bit more direct and a little bit closer to us. And it actually presents us with an idea of light that appears to be actually traveling faster than the speed of light. It's known as light echoes. And the best and the most recent example of light echoes comes from this region right here, from a somewhat unknown and I guess in some sense not really interesting um, constellation known as Monoceros. Right here in the middle there's a star known as V838. It's essentially a star that had something very unusual happen around it. We believe that it might have been even a collision with a planet and it created this beautiful formation that you see right here. And what you're observing here is happening over the period of several years, but if you were to look at these outskirts, they do appear to be moving faster than the speed of light because this here is already more than several light years across. And this beautiful video made by the ESA shows us what uh, may have happened in this region, but how is it possible for this to move faster than the speed of light? Well, it's actually not moving faster than the speed of light at all. What's happening here is a very well-known concept of light echo. Another YouTube channel, 60 Minutes, actually made a video explaining how this works by using a laser pointer. But in order to try to understand how exactly light echoes work, let's actually try to analyze what happened to the star. So this is a very active star, it's also emitting a lot of different uh, particles and has a really really strong solar wind, so over time it actually acquires these layers away from the star itself. These are gas layers, basically think of them as these really really big clouds of gas several light years away from the star itself, but there are many of them, it's kind of like an onion, it has several layers spreading in every single direction. And then some sort of a catastrophic event occurs in the middle of the star system, basically probably a collision with a really large object that suddenly releases a tremendous amount of energy and a lot of this energy is ionizing. Essentially it causes the gas molecules to create a lot of other light that is visible from every other direction. In a nutshell, that's kind of how nebula work. Nebula are essentially these large gas clouds and the source in the middle, usually some sort of a neutron star, or basically a pulsar, causes these uh, clouds to acquire this color because the ionizing energy from the pulsar creates these different colors. But as this energized ionized light travels away from the star, it starts hitting these different layers. 
But as it starts hitting these layers, some of this light gets to travel back to planet Earth. And the thing is, as it hits these layers, some of which could be light years apart, it starts generating this effect where we can now start seeing these layers being illuminated. And this illustration from NASA sort of shows you what happens. So we have this light flash, we have several dust clouds. When the light flash hits the first cloud, this is where some of the light gets returned back to Earth. And as the other clouds get hit, some of this other light starts being returned as well. But notice how some clouds are really far away from each other, but the light from these clouds will actually reach Earth at the same time. And because of this, it will create a kind of illusion of actually moving way, way faster across the night skies than it really is. So even though originally the light hit this cloud first and then it hit this one here, by the time the light makes it to Earth, it's actually going to appear as if this other faraway light moves much slower than the light coming from here, which is not true at all. In other words, it's a kind of a visual illusion. And one of the best examples was actually, once again, from 60 Minutes, who explained it as a really simple example using a laser pointer and the moon. If you were to take a laser pointer and if you were to shine it across the surface of the moon, it would actually appear as if the laser pointer can technically move faster than the speed of light. But is it actually doing so? Well, not really. The light itself moves uh, at the speed of light, but as it reaches the moon, it does create this appearance of faster than light motion. And the most well-known and most beautiful example of this is right here in V838 Monoceros. And this is, of course, the second example of how things can appear to be traveling faster than the speed of light. But then there's one more. And this one relates to extremely powerful jets coming from, well, usually black holes, but sometimes also pulsars. And when such jet doesn't really point directly at us, but is sort of under an angle, normally a much smaller angle than 45 degrees, but also bigger than zero, it can once again create a very interesting superluminal effect. Sometimes creating the effect of light traveling six, seven, or even eight times faster than the light itself. Now, all of this depends on two things. First of all, how fast the jet itself is releasing various particles. And second of all, what the angle of the observation or the angle of line of sight is. So in some examples that were created by this wonderful person, Michael Richmond, um, practically 20 years ago, we can see that this right here gives you the highest possible superluminal effect for a typical quasar jet. So basically, if the angle is about 25 degrees or so, and the jet speed is about 90% of the speed of light, we'll see something that appears to be moving at about 2 or even 2.1 speed of light. And even though this sounds like a lot, it actually is even more for the super famous M87 galaxy and the black hole in the middle. In 2019, this black hole became really famous because we were able to take a photo of this, but it was famous for a lot of other things even before this picture came out. Over the past 20 years, the scientists have established that this black hole is really, really good at creating these superluminal jets. Now, this is a typical emission that was observed in 1994, 95, 96, up to 98. And you'll notice that here, even though each emission represents only one year, it appears to be moving about six to seven times the speed of light. And that is pretty impressive, even for other superluminal jets we've seen so far. What this suggests to us is that the way we're looking at the black hole and its jet is at just the right angle to create these very unusual observations. And the speed of the actual particles is close to about 99% of the speed of light, creating these unusual effects. But how exactly does this work? Well, it actually has something to do with trigonometry. And a wonderful person by the name of Sihad Kibris created this illustration that shows you what's kind of happening. This is the black hole, this is the uh, line of sight toward planet Earth, and this is the actual angle of the jet itself. As we know for M87, this speed here is about 0.99 speed of light. And so when initial light is emitted, it starts traveling toward planet Earth and eventually we'll be able to see it. But by the time that the actual jet particles reach point B and emit the second photon, the first photon emitted from the black hole itself is only here. And so now if we wait about 100 years, this here will be 100 light years in distance. However, this distance will be a little bit shorter because it's actually not moving at the speed of light. These are actual particles, they can't move at the speed of light. So this distance will be about 90 light years. But what about this distance here? Well, by using trigonometry, we can actually calculate this by taking this distance 
and subtracting this multiplied by cosine of 15. So essentially, it's going to be 100 minus 90 multiplied by cosine of 15, giving us about 13 light years. So essentially, this distance CD is about 13 light years. Okay, but now we also have to look at this here. How do we find that? So once again, by using trigonometry and multiplying sine of 15 degrees with the hypotenuse here, which is essentially 90 light years, we're going to get a number that's 23.3 light years, which is where the idea of superluminal velocity starts to appear. Even though technically the light has only traveled 13 light years, it appears to have traveled 23 light years. And the faster the actual jet is releasing the particles, the more superluminal velocity will appear. So this is kind of what we're seeing with the M87 black hole. It seems to appear to move about seven times the speed of light, suggesting that the actual particles are moving really, really close to about 99% of the speed of light. If we go back to the calculations I just showed you and replace 90 with 99, you'll actually get 4.37 light years for this distance here, which is CD, and 25.6 light years for the distance right here known as BC, which means that the superluminal effect here would be about 5.9 times higher. So this is essentially those three examples of superluminal effects around the universe. And in a nutshell, that's probably the only way you can ever observe or see light travel faster than the light. As of today, there is no other example of superluminal travel. And as I mentioned in the beginning, our physics really depends on the idea of constancy of the speed of light. But anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about this idea of superluminal light travel. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it actually helps me quite a lot.